Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. We're live in the studio for Manchester United's trip to Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup semi-final. This is going to be Eric Ten Hag's best chance of silverware this season, um, the Carabao Cup, because it's the semi-final, it's against Nottingham Forest and on the other side, is it Newcastle and... I don't know, Crystal Palace, Wolves, I don't even, I don't actually know. Um, but I think it probably will be Newcastle in the final if everything goes to plan. But we're talking Manchester United, we're talking Nottingham Forest, and Eric Ten Hag will be taking this game very seriously, which I think you will see when you look at my lineup on the screen, because this is how I think Eric Ten Hag will line up in this game, taking it very seriously, but making a couple of changes. Remember, we've got this ridiculous workload I was talking with Ben Foster uh, earlier on the channel about. Um, was it? 18 games in 61 days, it is relentless. Um, maybe this is a tournament and the FA Cup that you could do with being out of, so you get a bit of break. But let's be honest, when you hit this stage of a tournament, you may as well try and win it. And yeah, it's a lot of extra games and it's a lot of extra risk for injuries, etc. But winning a trophy in his first season, whether it's a Carabao Cup or an FA Cup, it will be a massive step for a club that's not won a trophy in, what, five years. So we've got to take it seriously. And of course, there is no Man City, there is no Arsenal, there is no Chelsea, there is no Liverpool. It's a great opportunity. And that's why I think he will go with this team. Now, you might disagree with me on some of those points, but uh, the first player I want to talk about is Casemiro. I think Casemiro comes straight back into this team. He is a massive part of our success over recent weeks and months. Um, he's the conductor of the team. He's the leader of the team. He may not wear the armbands, but I think we saw against Arsenal just how significant and important he is to Manchester United. And there are opportunities to rest some players, and we'll go back to the lineup, and I'm sure you'll see that there are some players in there that, like, you know, your Rashfords and your Brunos that are really important as well, and we will rotate others. But Casemiro didn't play against Arsenal, and his last game was Crystal Palace. So therefore, I think that utilising him and then maybe not using him against Reading. Um, might be away, and, and you've got to bring Reading into this because uh, that's why I think I would. I think De Gea will start because I think against Reading at home you can play Heaton, you could play Butland. So I think De Gea will come in. I think Casemiro needs to play and maybe rest him against Reading, then bring him back in for the second leg. But the first leg is at the City Ground. I do expect us to win. Uh, I expect us to win over two legs. But let's not disrespect Nottingham Forest. They have over the last few games, picked up some results that are more positive than their start to the season. And at the city ground, the atmosphere, a cup semi-final, they'll be feeling if they can get something there, they've got something to hang on to at Old Trafford. Whereas for us, I think if we can get a positive result at the city ground, we can cruise through in that second leg at Old Trafford. So we've got to go strong. Um, so De Gea in goal, as you can see, wan -Bissaka, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire at centre-back, I hear you say. What are you talking about? Well, Varane went off against Arsenal right at the end. There's rumours that he took, you know, it was because of a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a bit of an injury. Some people think it was a bit tactical. Either way, I do think he will bring Harry Maguire back into the team. Captain Maguire is only one game away from Wembley where he'll lift the trophy. He'll be back involved, I think, Harry. Um, and, and again, it, of course, I want to see Varane and Martinez play, and he may go that strong. But I think he will take Luke Shaw and Varane out of the team. They've played a lot of football since Christmas. Martinez has only just come back into the team. We don't have the low. So I think wan Martinez will play and Maguire and uh, Malasia will be the rotational players. And that's as simple as that. I don't think it's got anything to do with dropping players, etc. I think it's just about pure rotation. It could be Lindelof. I think Lindelof and Maguire will probably play against Reading as well. So it's a chance to get them into the team. Already discussed about the midfield. Casemiro. I think Eriksen is in desperate need of a break, absolutely needs a break. Um, I mean, after an hour of the last two games, he's looked exhausted. So Fred, who many felt should have started against Arsenal in the first place, I think Fred will come into this game and Ericsson will get the break. And Fred for, Fred for Ericsson at the moment really isn't about rotation. I, you could argue that Casemiro and Fred is a stronger midfield to take to an away ground than Casemiro and, er and Ericsson anyway. So I think that that's a, an obvious change to make to give Ericsson a break, but also you know, make us a little bit more, a bit, a little, little bit, little bit stronger, a little bit stronger away from home. I think Bruno's got to play simply because who else do you play at number ten? Rashford's got to play for the goals. Um, Anthony, I think, will play off the right. I would was tempted to put Ganacho there, but I think Ganacho's more likely to start in the home surroundings against Reading, like I've mentioned with a few other players. And then Veghorst up front. Uh, Voot Veghorst, the, he needs a goal. Like, I, I think he's been deprived of service in his first two games in the graveyard shift. And I think in a game like this, 
Martial's not going to be back, let's be honest. I don't see Martial being back for a couple of weeks now. I know we won't get that detail from Ten Hag. Maybe we will in the press conference tomorrow, but I doubt it. So I think with Veghorst, this is the player we've brought in at the moment. I know Fabrizio this afternoon was talking about players we might bring out in the final few days. But Veghorst is the, is, is the striking option. We didn't get Gakpo. We didn't get Jao Felix. We've gone for this cheap option from Burnley. And, and Ten Hag has you know, put his faith in him. And you know, we saw him running around a lot against Arsenal, but there's no service there. So I think it's in Ten Hag's interest to play him as much as possible in these first few games to get that first goal. Because you know what football's like. We've seen it with Anthony. If you don't get the chances and you don't take the goals, people will be on saying, what a bad deal this is, what a bad deal that is. So I think Veghorst has to play, even though, admittedly, I think it is a bit of an issue the way we're lining up at the moment with Veghorst. It's taken a bit of adjustment for him and a bit of an adjustment for Manchester United. But I think Veghorst has to play. I mean, who else is going to play through the middle? You could put Rashford through the middle and put Ganacho on the left. But I think it's logical that we've got to try and... Um, get Veghorst scoring goals, but also get his fitness levels up, get that chemistry going. So logically, I think it makes a lot of sense for Veghorst to play. And I think overall, that lineup, pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with that lineup. I, you know, if we can rest Varane and Shaw and Ericsson, that's intelligent with the volume of games we've got. And I think on Saturday, we'll be able to rest some of these players again. Maybe Rashford gets a rest. Certainly, maybe Martinez. And maybe we can find a way of resting uh, wan -Bissaka, maybe Casemiro. So I'd love to be resting Bruno and give him a, a bit of a break. But I think that the, these games are really important opportunities. I don't think we can be going out to Reading and I don't think we can be losing to Forest. But it is an opportunity to give people a bit of a break. In the game itself, um, as I say, Forest don't concede many goals. I think the only loss they've had since Christmas was us, actually. I don't think they've lost since the World Cup break. I think that, that, that loss to us on what was it, December the 27th? Um, that's the only loss they've had. So they're definitely much improved. Um, they're be definitely getting more understanding with all those new signings. They, they don't concede many goals. And it'll be a massive game for them. Massive game for them at the City ground. Remember, this is the first time they've had Manchester United back since they've been a Premier League club. Um, the atmosphere will be big. There'll be a lot of United fans going to it as well. I think it's going to have a proper cup tie. And I think at this stage of the Carabao Cup, you cannot disrespect it. It is a semi-final. And this will be the most significant game. I think at Old Trafford, we'd expect to win. They'd expect us to win. So their opportunity of causing a shock and getting to Wembley will very much be dependent on what they do in the home leg. It is dangerous. I've got to say, this. there's a couple of things that worry me about this game for United. The first thing being fatigue. Um, I think Manchester United have looked very tired in the second half and that worries me in a game like this where we've got to play for 90 minutes away from home because they certainly will. And then the other thing that concerns me a little bit is that they are a better team than I think we played um, uh, back in December and they've got more confidence. And to be honest, that game, if I remember it correctly, it took us a bit of time to break them down anyway. So... I think that we're going to be very reliant on Rashford and Bruno in a game like this. And we've got to be able to try and play for 90 minutes and not for 45. Because if we don't, it could be a difficult game. I fancy us over two legs, but it's not as straightforward as I thought it was when the draw initially came out. I think it will be more of a challenge. And I think this away leg is, is, is going to be really important. I'm glad we've got the away leg first. Obviously, when you're at home in the second leg, it gives you the chance to right any wrongs from the first leg. But... I think so much depends about how, 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 how much we've got left in the tank for these types of games. I would hope that United are very motivated. I'm sure Ten Hag will have them very motivated for two reasons. One, to respond to a disappointing loss for Arsenal. But two, there's a, there's a, there's a trophy here. There is a trophy. And look, many people will disrespect the Carabao Cup. But actually, when you look at the start of the season, you can only win the Premier League, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup in, the, in domestic football. There's, no, there's nothing else to win. The Champions League is a distant dream for the, for the elite of the Premier League, and sometimes they do win it. But logically, there are only three trophies to play for. When you've not won one for five years, we can't be disrespecting it going, oh, it's only the Carabao Cup. It's the semi-final. There's a game at Wembley there to be won, and we are the favourites in this tournament. So we need to go and get it. And I, I'm not going to understate how important it would be for Manchester United to be lifting this trophy at the end of February because, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And I, I don't want to be getting excited about winning the Carabao Cup and the Carabao Cup alone, but 
for where we are and where we've come from and where we were at the end of last season, I think top four, which is looking very, 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 very much in our hands, and a Carabao Cup, which is also looking in our hands, would be a fantastic first season for Ten Hag, and it might not be our only limits. You know, we are still in the FA Cup as well. So, looking forward to this. Um, I think some people feel that the Premier League, because we're not playing in the Premier League for the next three games, it's a bit of a, a bit of a lull period. Not for me. I think you know, th th this time next week we could be talking about a trip to Wembley and into the next round of the FA Cup. And I'm sure we're going to see some rotation, but it's a big opportunity for players to step in, like Malasia, maybe a Maguire or a Lindelof, certainly someone like a Fred. Um, it's a chance to come in and, you know, not only play well and stake a claim for the rest of the season, but also to give some people who really need a rest some rest. So, look, excited about it. Um, excited to see. I'm going to go with Manchester. Uh, you know what? I feel it could be a 1-1 draw. I, th I think if we're not a 90-minute team and we're tired, it could be a 1-1 draw. If we are motivated and able to play for 90 minutes, I fancy us to win 2-0. How do you go from 1-1 to 2-0? I don't know. But um, I'm going to go with the 2-0 win for Manchester United. But if that fatigue continues to drop, it could be a draw. Let us know what you think in the comments. Smash the like on the video and make sure you subscribe. Speak to you on the next one.